Welcome to a Fresh Perspective podcast, catering to the latest in ingredient trends, consumer insights, and food news. Brought to you by Corbion. Welcome to a Fresh Perspective podcast, a podcast where we talk about everything food. I'm Jenny Kolzer, your host, and today I'm joined by Frank Seegers, scientist, food and microbiology preservation, and Al King, manager of technical service here at Corbion. We are going to talk today about natural mold inhibition and the model that we've created here at Corbion. And I say we, but I don't really mean we, right, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Uh well, it's a big team that uh, that did it. So it's quite a big we that uh, worked on this model. So that's uh, in that sense, yes. <laughs> so welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you. Morning, Jenny. Morning. Tell me a little bit about this model. So it's a predictive modeling tool, right? Frank, can you tell me why did we create this? So there's a, a bigger demand for changing from uh, calcium propionate in bread, for instance, to some other components that would be working for malt inhibition. And this tool makes it easier to switch to something else in calcium propionate, but, but it actually it also would help actually for calcium propionate. So it would be a tool to help looking further into other options, especially for natural malt inhibition. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So for layman. For me, yeah. for example, if I'm not a scientist, yes. talk to me about calcium propionate. Like, so, what, what does it do? So calcium propionate is usually added to bread to prevent mold from growing. So it's an, a mold oh. inhibition. It will slow down the growth that it, of mold on, on your bread. So the more you put in it, the, the longer it can last on the shelf and, and you will not have any mold on it. So now it is, we can add some other ingredients to it that would also work like this. And we can predict how long it could last until your mold would start molding. But of course, there's a whole bunch of different molds in the world that can land on your bread. So you you have to know what type of mold is, could be landing on it and then which one is starting to grow. So we have to understand, so know your enemy in that sense. And then what we do is we take it apart from bread. We, we, we look at the mold separately. How are they responding to the different components that would cause this mold inhibition? And once you start understanding that, we apply it to bread as well to validate. And from that, we can model, predict how, how long a bread will last. Okay, uh, excellent. Simply put it, but it's uh, there's a lot of science behind it indeed. And then... Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, thank you. I needed like the superhero version, right? The the mold is the enemy and they're landing on the bread. And I just kind of imagine yeah. this battle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how Al, can we how... delay them as long as possible? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Al, how user-friendly is this modeling tool? You know, what kind of, like, do you have to have technical expertise to operate it? No, <clears throat> this is something that if I take it into a bakery, it's very easy. There's just a couple of input items that they need to put in there some flour, dough weight, water activity, pH, and absorption and moisture lost in product. And you plug them in there and then you put your current uh, ESL in there. And once you put all your, the rest of your formulation, it'll calculate how many days that product is gonna be mold free. Okay, what's ESL? Extended shelf life. Ah, I see. So you put in there how long you'd like it to last, basically. Correct. And every customer is different. Some customers want 12, some customers want 14 days, some customers want 21 days. So depending on the amount of uh, mold-free days they want, that's how we use the application. Okay, excellent. And so how do we know that this works? I assume we had to verify it within the science, right? And then we also probably had to verify it in the bakery. So Frank, why don't you tell us how we verified it on the science side? Yeah, so for all the products that work as a mold inhibition, we take them apart in the separate components, and then we would test all the molds that we have on these components and see how would they, how they would respond to them. From that, we understand the mold part. Uh, we also added the, the water activity, for instance. So we look also environmental components that we can add to this understanding the mold. And then we move to the bread, where we are producing very strange bread in a way, where we're playing around with the same type of components. Then we test the mold again on the bread, and then we see how long it takes until it starts molding. And from that, we can then combine the, the two together and we end up with a predictive mold. So we understand how well it, it would work when, when, when we start using our components 
with all the components combined. And that it works quite well because yeah, you do some validation studies on that and then uh, and then you know how well you can predict it. Of course, it's, you can never predict everything 100% correct, but it's it's uh, it's quite uh, accurate, yeah. Nice. And then Al, you took that to the bakeries? This is the, when the light bulb moment happens because I could be in a plant for weeks or even a month running trials on natural mold inhibition, plugging it into different varieties and getting the results. And then I've had a bunch of data that, I, that I've run trend trials. And when this model came out, I thought, well, I'm going to test this baby out because I'm not going to go out there and promote this if I don't believe in it myself. And I started plugging in the data for my trials. And man, the number of mold-free days was exact. I mean, within a day, I mean, it was right there. So it's like, man, this, wow. this, is, this could have saved me so many trials where I have a better start point and it really gives you an advancement. When I put this in front of a customer and I showed them and I said, just change that pH from a 5.3 to a 5.2, all of a sudden the number of mold-free days went up by seven and the customer was like Whoa. blown away. And then we ran the trials and a month later I came back and the predictive tool was right on. That is incredible. Oh my goodness. So clearly verified in both places, right? Isn't that Absolutely. So it sounds like there would be, you know, kind of a small learning curve, right? So it's not like if you take it into a bakery that, you know, they're going to have to waste a lot of product making this work in their recipes, right? Correct. That, that, that takes out all the guesswork. Because when, when anytime you're presenting a new product to a bakery, there's a lot of challenges. The bakeries today have enough challenges with staffing and everything else that's going on. They don't need somebody to come in and say, here, we want to test in your bakery and we're going to be here for three months. That's just not today's world. Everybody's geared up for summer baking of rolls right now. So nobody really wants you testing. So when you can pre mm -hmm. present something like this and say, well, here, here's your start point. We've taken all the legwork out of it for you. And then the, the bakeries are much more receptive to move forward. Uh, yeah, I would think so, right? So I know that at Core Beyond, we have bakeries all over the world. And all over the world, you know, environmental things are different. So how can the tool adapt to change, you, you know, when it comes to things like environmental factors, maybe even ingredient availability? Frank, is there something specific that, that the tool can do to make it work everywhere? Uh, yes. Uh, so we, we have added to the, to the model, we have several molds. That we we put in this in, in in the model, and we have this preservation tolerant molds group, which is very the typical molds that are difficult to handle, and you will find them more most often as the problematic molds in regions where they use a higher amount of calcium propionate in the past. So, the, so that would be for the the, the US and um, for Europe. They have stand lim well. There's limitations on how much propionate you can use, so they only they, they use less of it in general, and it's also cultural that they, they just it's different. Not everywhere we have the same same type of breads always, and we also have the group of common food spoilage molds, and there are some molds that are just less tolerant, meaning that they don't need as much propionate, for instance, to be inhibited. So. It would be good for some regions where they cannot go as high with the propionate that they can look at these other types of molds as well and have an idea of what they might expect. Because they know they cannot, uh, like the preservative tolerant one molds, they will always be problematic for them. So they, right. then they can have an idea by using looking at the other molds what, what the effect will be and uh, an estimation on that. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. So Al, how do you support bakeries that that do want to make this change? Like, how do you talk to them about it? You know, how do you really start this conversation? Well, uh, really, our sales team are, are the folks out there on the street. They get us these opportunities with our customers, and then we have to come in and perform. And part of our program, because it's natural mold inhibition, as part of the tech service team, I'm not just there to sell something to you. I want to come in and I want to make sure this is successful in your bakery. So what we'll do is we'll go in and I'll collect some data first from the bakery, from usually the quality control manager. I'll get some finished pHs of products if there's a history of product molding. And then that, that'll be a note on a separate side. 
But then we also do an inspection of the bakery of the facility. We want to do a walkthrough. We want to make sure that there are good GMPs in place and make some observations along the way. Time and temperature is everything in baking. So making sure you're hitting your critical temperatures in the process. And then we can make a good evaluation. And then even before we start with any kind of natural mold preservation, we make sure we bring this information to the customer and say, here, here's a start point. Look at this. Make sure people are wearing gloves and packaging when they're handling product and things of that nature. So it's not just a one fits all. It's, it's, it's specific for each different customer. Wow. That's, that's really thorough. I guess I didn't realize like you're from soup to nuts, they, as they say, right? Absolutely. That, that's part of the tech service team. What we do, I mean, our group is probably the superior in the industry uh, and we just go in there and we knock it out of the park as often as we can. And the, our, the customer, they're, for, they're on our side and we're on the customer side. We go in there and we do everything to make sure it runs smooth because when we go in and it looks smooth, the customer's happy and we can all go home happy. That's right. Are there any additional uses for the mold inhibition tool? Yeah, I, I believe that the tool is also useful for educational purposes because we can use the model, for instance, to, to show what the effect of pH is on mold inhibition. And just for understanding mold 